My name is Mark Benson Madsen, and I am a state senator representing District 13 in Utah. I was born in Washington, D.C., but at uh, an early age, my parents moved our family to the Denver, Colorado area. My grandfather is Ezra Taft Benson. My grandfather was my hero and a friend long before I understood that he had been the Secretary of Agriculture or that he was a member of the Quorum of Twelve Apostles, and that he'd done so many other incredible things in his life. But as I came to know him in that capacity, he was a great mentor and uh, taught me about individual liberty and individual accountability and the principles that underlie the proper role of government. Over the course of, of my life, I've traumatized my spine in various ways. Over time, I've had several external treatments ranging from chiropractic to a TENS unit, which I wore out, several nerve blocks, several epidurals. Uh, up to and including a, a rhizotomy, which is a more invasive procedure where nerve endings are fried off. My doctors, over time, have prescribed various uh, opioid narcotics. It was a summer day. It was Pioneer Day. And we had been doing all of the Pioneer Day activities. We'd been working in the yard and pulling weeds. Um, I think we had been putting in some, some planter boxes involving some sand and some cement. Uh, we were grilling, I think, some chicken and corn on the cob and what Mark didn't know at the time and I didn't know at the time was he had a fentanyl patch on because he has a very bad back that causes him extreme pain and the patch had a reservoir of medicine in it and that patch had burst. Now the symptoms of an overdose from fentanyl are nausea and fatigue and when Mark's patch burst, he was unaware that it had burst. He just started to feel almost like he had come down with a really bad flu. So he had told our girls, I'm not feeling good, I'm going to go lay down. I had gone into the house to work on another project and our oldest daughter came to me and said, Mom, Dad told me to wake him up and I can't wake him up. And I have to admit, I was a little frustrated thinking, you know, here I am doing all of these projects on this day and you're downstairs taking a nap. So I went downstairs to wake him up and he was cold and clammy. He had turned gray. He was not breathing. Um, so I, I dragged him off the couch and I put him on the floor. We had a neighbor that was a paramedic. I told my daughter to run to her house and come and get her because we lived out in the country and I knew it might be a while before the paramedics could arrive. And I wanted somebody else there. And then with our phone, I called 911 and I started doing rescue breaths. I could, I could feel that his heart was beating, but he was not breathing. And I was terrified. I had four young children, and I thought my husband was dead. I always figured I would have to work out my own pain issues with surgeries and, and with the opioids, and I'd have to force my way through. And after that, I'd never bought the patches with the reservoir kind. They, they eliminated that risk. There are other types that you can that you can buy. So I went through just figuring I'd solve that within the traditional medical parameters. But as I was meeting with phys traditional physicians across the country, looking at options for my, my back problems, this kept coming up as a particular alternative to the opioids. And so I in my own mind, thought that that was something to consider. When Mark came and said that his doctor had encouraged him to pursue cannabis, you know, I'm just envisioning people sitting in their basement and smoking doobies and thinking, this is not what I want. This is not, certainly not what I want for, for my family. And I didn't see any medical benefit. It was only after reading the medicinal studies and talking to doctors and realizing that this is a much healthier alternative than the opioids, that it does not have the side effects. You can't take your cannabis and accidentally die. In 2014, when we passed the CBD oil bill, what really touched me was when those young children who had been struggling with these severe seizures up to the point of death, came to visit us on the floor of the Senate at the time we passed the bill. And I realized that it was misguided government policy that had been keeping relief from these innocents. 
And I started to take a different perspective and I realized that it just wasn't about me and my back pain. I realized that there were other people that were suffering and suffering worse than I that could really benefit from this. And I couldn't be selfish and just say, I'll sort this out eventually for myself and I don't care about anybody else. I realized that again, this misguided policy was keeping real relief from people that could really benefit from it, many much more than I. And when it became an issue that was not just about me, that's when I realized that I had to do something. And at every step, it has been consistent with the principles that I have stood for for 10 years, at least tried to stand for for 10 years in this legislature, individual liberty, limited government. Let's let people make decisions for themselves as to what is the best remedy uh, for whatever condition they might have. Government stepping in to say, this is not allowed, uh, is unacceptable and inconsistent with the principles of freedom that I believe in. As we look at this issue, we need to realize that cannabis has been sold to us as something that it's not. One thing I needed to, that I realized when I started looking into this was so much that I knew was not true. I'm concerned about my, my immortal soul, and as long as I am not committing a sin in the process of doing this, then again, I'll let my principles take me where they may. I'm Mark Madsen. I support the legalization of medical cannabis to treat medical conditions, not only in Utah, but throughout the whole country. Utah, you can make a change this year. To find out how, visit dpputah.org. Discover more patient stories and the science behind cannabis with Illegally Healed. Two words that don't belong together.